so I just recorded this entire video in 4K. I don't know why. And at the seven minute mark, my camera overheated and cut off. So I gotta do this all over again. Good morning guys, welcome back to the vlog. I know for some of you guys it is not morning time, however I don't have a better intro yet, so you gotta just roll with me on that. Today, things are gonna be a little bit different for um, everyone who's watching. Typically, I'm like out on the field, outside, vlogging, camera up in the air, case and nice that like tripod, giving you guys all those good scenes in downtown Detroit. But today is gonna be a little bit different. Um, I haven't uploaded in three weeks, and that's because I felt like the content wasn't that great. It had like went on for like a week, and then I was like, well, I can't come back with these shitty photographs. And that narrative continued to continue, I don't know. And it, now it's three weeks. I talked to a friend of mine, he's like, hey, you're being too hard on yourself. Figure out a way to use those um, shitty photographs to, your, to, you know, to your benefit, to educate. And then I was just like, duh, that makes so much sense. That's what my blog was about. You know, when I was blogging, it was never about how great I was or being excellent. It was about what I did that day and how I could do better tomorrow. So I'm hoping this series um, helps you guys get that same insight. This is called Behind the Photos, where instead of showing you how I take the photos, I'm gonna tell you why I took the photo. If the photo didn't come out the way I wanted it to, I'm gonna tell you what I had hoped for. Because I know a lot of you think that I just kinda spray and pray, I just burst mode, I just, you know, shoot whatever and hope it comes out great. And that's not the case. You know, I, I do have an idea of what I want. I, 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 can, I do visualize photographs and yeah, we're gonna talk about that exact same thing. I'm so fucking happy that video cut off because this intro is already 10 times better than the one I did before. So yeah, never um, give up, live, live your dreams. All right, so let's get into the first shot. Um, here's a pretty basic scene. I'm standing on a somewhat popular corner in Detroit. I use the word popular very vaguely because um, that can mean five people. But anyway, uh, there's like a nice, uh, imbalance between harsh light and shadows as you can see due to like a taller building and I'm just waiting and hoping for somebody to walk through the frame and uh, kind of capture like that that cross you know look um, in the video I show you I showed me standing there for like 10 seconds however I was there for like five minutes which is an eternity to me it was hot I was extremely bored and I just didn't get anybody to even walk near me you know let alone just anybody interesting so I kind of gave up. I started to walk out of the light, out of that scene, and um, move on to the next moment. As I started to step forward, I noticed a guy kind of noticed my camera equipment. He put his head down, and I thought, oh, this might be a cool shot, kind of getting him kind of stirring away or kind of, uh, yeah, just not wanting to, you know, be in the frame. And I know that once my camera went off, he would look up at me and give me a reaction that I, I tend to capture often, you know, and I, this is a kind of a safe shot for me a warm-up shot but it's also something that I like to include um, in my work because it, it sets the tone for my aesthetic that I like to capture reactions that I like to be involved in the picture myself and that my presence is the reason these people are making these faces or kind of giving me these confused looks um, at the end of these kind of shots to send a smile you know hey thanks or whatever that way they know like it's just all good vibes but I do like that initial reaction so much and I, I was definitely able to capture that here uh, the next image is a shot I kind of visualized before I took it. I really, like even to this moment, like the idea of, of what I visualized. It was actually very simple. So um, I saw two couples talking. Uh, the female was kind of dominating the conversation. The guy was looking kind of nervous, kind of, you know, holding back. And they were both smoking cigarettes. And I thought maybe if I come up to that scene and I shoot from um, below, they'll like both look down at the camera. And that would be like a super cool shot because you can see like the legs kind of elongated. The lady kind of had her arms crossed and you can kind of see the cigarette held down. And I thought it would have just really flowed well where you can like kind of use the, their legs as almost like, you know, leading vertical lines up into their face in which they'd have like a what are you doing kind of facial expression. And that, that just didn't happen. The, the lady definitely gave me the expression because she didn't see me coming. You know, I was coming from an angle. I was kind of head on with the guy. She was kind of against that wall. And um, the guy kind of still had that nervous look like, uh, I'm just gonna look the other way. The lady kind of looked down at me. If you zoom in, you can kind of see she, she did give me the kind of expression that I wanted. But due to harsh light, you know, you really can't see it from a distance. And I just totally fucked the composition up 100% uh, with this one. Um, I aimed for my blind fire for my knee, which is not a typical place to shoot from. And 
I think whenever you, the lower you hold the camera, the more you tend to bend it. So you can kind of see this, the camera was kind of like at an angle, so it wasn't really straight on. And I just like really didn't get the guy into the frame. I didn't get the reaction that I wanted. Um, and it just didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. I, I reattempted the shot and tried to reframe it, but at that point, the moment was already gone. A lot of these moments are one of ones, hit or miss. I definitely miss with this one. However, I, I, I do like the idea that I visualized. I think had they both looked down at me, had they both kind of had a confused look on their face, and uh, you know, had the, the legs been properly composed, or their bodies for that matter, that would have been a, an interesting shot. Would it have been the world's best shot? No, but again, it would have just went into that same field of you know me being consistent in my style, my look. And um, you know, for those of you who know me, who've been watching this vlog for the past 80 videos or whatever, you know that every now and then I like to get a little weird and shoot hands and legs and feet and stuff like that. So this has kind of brought all those kind of um, components into one image. And yeah, you know, had it worked out, I think it would have been a pretty solid shot. You know, if this was a photo book, this would have been one of those shots where you're like, oh, okay, you know, next page, you know, but it, it still would have been consistent. So maybe next time. This third shot is like kind of a shot that I hope I can capture every day. Um, I feel like I'm being repetitive, but this is kind of like the epitome of my, of my, you know, my style, my look, you know, this is a reflection of what I would like to capture every day because you can even see it in the POV. Once I see this guy, I just click. My hand goes up, I photograph him because this is the this is that kind of guy that I relate to. This is somebody who was at work, he's probably stressed out. And I felt like, you know, he needed that coffee, he needed that cigarette, you know, that, that mix of uh, you know, caffeine and nicotine. He he needed he needed to get outside. And, you know, me taking his picture wasn't gonna ruin his day. His day was already not that great, you know. And I and I and I can relate to that, you know, I have bad days too. I've been in that that work nine to five, you know, got to dress up type of lifestyle before. And, you know, that's just a, a an, an example of relating to somebody without even talking to them, you know? But yeah, I really just like, the, you know, the facial expression he gave me. I like that he kind of blew the smoke. Uh, again, I like that his hands were kind of busy with, um, you know, the coffee and the bag and the cigarette. Uh, what I could, what I would like to change about the photograph, maybe if the words weren't jumping out of his head, the Starbucks logo, maybe he had coffee on the brain. I don't know, that's a little distracting. I would have much rather liked to see the Starbucks logo. Um, being that the shot's in color, uh, the Potbelly logo would have been nice too if I could have had that kind of a little more vibrant. So maybe I angled the shot different where um, his entire head's blocking the Starbucks logo, but the Potbelly logo was like completely visible just to kind of give you that, that extra hint of color, you know, uh, coming in. Um, I hate that fucking car. I wish that car wasn't there. Um, it, I tend to, I mean, I guess it kind of, it makes the left side of the frame look stupid that it's so negative. I, I tend to shoot with a uh, negative space. I, I, I've learned to embrace it being that Detroit again is in a heavily populated city. But yeah, if that car was gone, I think it would have been a much better photo. But um, yeah, I definitely like it. I'm, I'm going to convert it to black and white. I'm going to upload it to Instagram. I think in black and white, the letters um, on the you know top left hand corner won't matter as much. But I think the car would become an even bigger distraction as it's gonna just like blend right into his suit. So, you know, we'll see once we get to that that stage. But um, yeah, love this photograph, love this expression. I, I like to make a whole book of photographs like this. I, I know for you guys, it's not the most interesting thing, but as a street photographer, just being able to have that personal relation with somebody, that's what you kinda, that, that's what I kinda yearn for every day is to be able to be like, hey, you know, snap, snap. I took this photo because I get you. and. I think that's awesome that my instincts kick in like that. So uh, yeah, let, let's, let's move on. This shot is another example of the lack of opportunity in Detroit. When I was walking and I saw those balloons, I legit freaked the fuck out. I was like, oh yeah, balloons is going down. About to get the balloon shot. Like, you know, I was so excited because that doesn't happen often. But you, you won't be able to tell that by looking at the POV. You know, I went up to this guy, I took a picture, he looked at me, I just walked away. You know, I don't know what was going through my mind. The picture wasn't good. It was like vertical. Um, the you barely could see the balloons. You know, I should have had. A, I should have really worked that scene. You know, I let my imagination. It, it, it didn't carry me in this one. You know, I just. I guess I thought I had the shot, and then I kind of. You know, I, I thought I got the look back, and that was what I wanted. Then when I got home, I realized the composition was nothing that I envisioned. 
you know, I should have stayed there and let that guy get those balloons out of that truck. I should have took some photographs of him walking away with to go deliver the balloons to wherever the fuck he was going. I should have shot high. I should have shot low. I should have waited until one of them fucking balloons flew up in the air and blew away and he tried to catch it. Like, you never know what can happen in these moments, so it's best to stay around for them. I think for me, um, what was going through my head was that I was struggling with the POV. I was struggling to get some interesting images, so I just kind of... Uh, wanted to move on to see if I can capture anything else because I wanted the POV to be interesting. I didn't want it to be 20 minutes of me trying to capture, you know, guy with the balloons. But I definitely should have gave it that a lot more time. I really regret that. I know that sounds stupid, but I'll probably never see balloons again. That was my first time ever seeing something like that in like two or three years. So, you know, I just, I just hope I get that moment back because if I do, I'm definitely going to execute better, dominate the shit out of it and spend as much time as I can possible with that guy until he tells me to get the fuck out of his face. So, um, yeah, definitely blew that one. This next photo, I actually think I executed it pretty well. I actually shot this lady before. I saw her like a week and a half ago. She was outside, same position, same dog, doing the same thing. It was like 10.30 at night, and all I had was my iPhone on me. I actually uploaded that photo, and um, yeah, when I saw her again, I was all, oh, this is a chance to kind of recapture this, get it in uh, color get in, you know, good lighting and kind of spend a little more time, you know, in, until I get the, the actual photograph that I want. So mainly in this subject, she was chilling. She was going to be the same no matter what. And I was just kind of hoping the dog would cooperate. So this is where burst mode, burst mode comes in handy. A lot of you guys ask why I shoot in burst mode is because I like to capture different moments and be able just to pick the scene later as opposed to taking 14 different snaps and hoping that it comes out, um, you know, great. So the dog was kind of just doing this thing. And uh, he just calmed down after a while, and that's what I wanted him to do, was to kind of just look head on to me. You know, I photographed from a low position and kind of get her uh, holding that dog. I really wanted to make sure that I incorporated that pink strap because, you know, that, that you know I'm just into colors now. They kind of make the photo for me, uh, being a black and white editor for such a long time. So, yeah, I think that was great. I think that's awesome that I was able to capture that twice. You don't tend to get um, the same moment within street photography. Uh, I guess unless you live like live in New York or something, but in Detroit you don't really get the same opportunities. So yeah, if you guys want to photograph her, if you ever come to the city, it's Washington Boulevard. I'm, I'm guessing she's always there. She's super chill. Somebody really cool to talk to. She knows a lot of shit about dogs. So if you're into dogs, you know, make sure you chop it up with her. But yeah, overall, I'm really happy with this photograph. Um, you guys, let me know what you think about it. So this photo uh, graph is also on Washington Boulevard. This is at the uh, hotel and. Yeah, I'm walking back from, you know, photographing the lady with the dog and I see this couple. I can't really hear them. I'm listening to an audible book, but I do see a lot of like, you know, you know, hand gestures going on. And I'm like, okay, we got something here. I see the, the uh, what is his name? The, I don't know. Let's just call him the bus boy. I can't think of his name or the hotel representative. Anyway, he's helping her, you know, put her clothes on a rack so they can take him up to their hotel room. This is a very, you know, nice hotel. So, you know, he's helping out doing his thing. And yeah, this lady's just like hitting it with the hand gestures, you know, the guy's like, yeah, whatever. And I'm just like, okay, well, I, I like the angle that I'm at. Hopefully I can get something good out of her. And I'm hoping that this guy who works there can look right into my camera so that can kind of really fill the frame. So, uh, yeah, I'm just waiting for her to get the proper hand gesture. She hits it with the like, you know, one of those kind of things. And this guy would just not look at me. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I even kind of like snapped my finger a couple times, which is like the most, the rudest thing you can fucking do. Uh, I, at that point, I was just hoping he'd be like, hey man, what are you doing? You know what I mean? As long as I got a reaction out of him that fit the photo, then that would have been awesome for me. However, he just wouldn't look at me. So, um, yeah, I don't know if he ruined the photo for me or not, but I'm definitely not as happy with it. I think if he would have gave me that, even a slight look, that would have really completed the image. But, uh, you know, you, people, you're working with other people, you know, you got to get what you can get, you know. So, yeah, I mean, honestly, I still think it's a, a subpar photo, though. I'll definitely, you know, use it for Instagram. You know, if I was ever creating a book or something, of course, it wouldn't make it in there. But I, I did like that moment and just kind of experiencing that, you know, showed me that the hotel might be a good place to kind of camp around a little bit just because you know it's a fast lifestyle people are getting off planes they're exhausted or they're they're rushing to a plane or you know whatever the case may be um they might be going out and they dressing up really nicely i think there's some good moments there so keep that in mind if you guys have some hotels near you 
but but yeah that's the end of this guys again i hope you really enjoy that i just did this video to kind of let you know what's going on in my mind uh, i said this earlier but i think as you know street photographers we need to stop acting like this shit's a secret get out there explain your process explain your thoughts because you know obviously we want to see everybody grow and get better and um yeah and, you know you never know if these kind of videos are going to leave um are going to make somebody else better or if they're going to help you out so if you guys are watching this you know jump in the comments let me know like hey on this photograph you should have hit it from this angle or you should have you know did this this and that and the third because that's always going to help me you know get better i, I read every comment if you're just like being a total dick, I'm not gonna respond to you. But if you're just like, you know, really, I see you trying to, you know, give me some, some, uh, some, some, you know, criticize me in a, in a more positive light to, you know, enhance my skill set. Then I'm all about that. Um, yeah. So I know it's been three weeks since I've uploaded. That's why I really made sure I kind of grinded and, and did this video. Again, this is my third time doing this, so big thumbs up. I'm like staring at the camera right now, wondering why the focus isn't moving. I'm hoping that this shit didn't cut off. But um, yeah, guys, go ahead and subscribe. If you're new to the channel, thanks for joining. If you're if you're thinking about joining, stop thinking, hit the subscribe button. I'll be back tomorrow. Remember, done is better than great. And uh, yeah, peace. Yes. Thank you.